the global leader of ISIS, known as Haji Abdullah. Good morning. This is the Stephanie Miller Show. I'm Jody Hamilton sitting in for Ms. Miller with my mooks. Mm-hmm. Hi. Hi. You're my mooks now. Your mo- yes. It even says it's the Jody Show yeah. on my uh on my guest. It's Jody Hamilton. Hamilton. Show. <laughs> 323-410-0458 <laughs> is the number. As you heard the president, um, U.S. forces uh, uh, killed the guy whose name I can't pronounce. Yep. Um, the number one in ISIS. <laughs> thank you. Um, and according to sources, um, he also detonated a suicide bomb mm-hmm. that killed not only himself but his wife and children. Um the reports are interesting from the ground, from people that were there. Uh, they said that um, some of the people that were there said that they heard helicopters circling, yeah, and ye- and and warning them to get out. They, 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 they made announcements that they had uh, that yeah. when they approached the the house that they alerted people, hey, leave the house, leave immediately. the house now. This is a, and and people on the first floor evacuated. The second floor apparently had a lieutenant. And his family, right? Mm-hmm. And then the the, the leader floor. was where the leader was, and that's he detonated the bomb, right? Um, you know, killing himself and his family. The the um, the lieutenant that was on the second floor opened fire, right? Then his wife opened fire. Yeah, yeah. that's what I heard yeah. yesterday too. Um, so, th- but th- but the people on the first floor uh, did leave, and people in the neighborhood. I saw reports last night um, yeah. on PBS News Hour. They were talking to people in the area, and they they did they did everything they could to. To warn people for a half an hour, they and, were and to avoid, to um, you know, casualties. Yeah, they they uh, the calls continued for a half an hour. Um, a woman appeared to be speaking with those issuing a warning before the house was bombed. Um, also, a military helicopter experienced a maintenance issue and it set down safely a mile away, uh, but was deemed unsafe to fly back and was detonated on site, so nobody mm-hmm. can you Use know pick that, it right. for parts, which yeah. is good. Um, so yeah, I mean, his kids were killed because he decided to. He kill detonated them. the bomb on the third floor. Yeah, it's that's too bad. Um, and uh, the decision to launch a raid rather than an airstrike was made after the intelligence suggested that civilians were living in the building. So they did the right thing. They and did what mitigated they could. as much as they could instead of uh, an airstrike, which would be usually how we would have done something. Well, like and that. another piece of this too is also because of the way they did this. They were hoping that they could, and they they did sweep the area for electronics and any devices that they could recover that may have information right. related to um, what ISIS may have been planning in the future. And they said that that was a big part of um, when they took um, Osama bin Laden. They were able to gather a lot of intel information from the location where they they found him as right, well. Right, exactly. So it's it, it 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 beyond just the civilians that they were trying to the civilian loss of life. There were also it's, it gives them more intelligence options or more. Exactly. I mean, uh, Biden said that uh, he's obviously uh, very pleased with what happened. Mm -hmm. um, And he said this. And thanks to the bravery of our troops, this horrible terrorist leader is no more. Our forces carried out the operation with their signature preparation and precision. And I directed the Department of Defense to take every precaution possible to minimize civilian casualties. Knowing that this terrorist had chosen to surround himself with families, including children, We made a choice to pursue a special forces raid at a much greater risk than our to our own people rather than targeting him with an airstrike yeah i think the i think that was the right thing to do i I agree i agree i you know i don't like anybody being killed in anything personally um especially when they're innocent civilians that are surrounded children i mean really you killed your own kids yeah but i mean these are terrorists this is that they believe in the cause that they do they do Um, And then uh, Biden went on to say this as well. But we do know that as our troops approach to capture the terrorist in a final act of desperate cowardice, he, with no regard to the lives of his own family or others in the building, he chose to blow himself up, not just to the vest, but to blow up that third floor rather than face justice for the crimes he has committed, taking several members of his family with him, just as his predecessor did. Yeah, I, I, it's just it's it's why have children if you're just gonna kill? I don't, you know what I mean? You know, I but you know. Uh, so but that seems to be their new modus operandi because they, because we were able to gather intel afterwards in the past that they don't want to leave it. They want to leave as little evidence behind as possible. Exactly, exactly. Now we had a, a quite the lively discussion this morning. Uh, we did um, regarding the reporting mm-hmm. that. Um, 
there is a rush there was according to the reporting a russian effort to fabricate a pretext for invading ukraine um the United States acquired intelligence about a Russian plan to fabricate a pretext for invasion of Ukraine using a fake video that would build on recent disinformation campaigns, according to senior administration officials and others briefed on it. Officials would not release any direct evidence, saying to do so would compromise their sources and methods. Uh, British government officials said that they had done their own analysis on the intelligence and had high confidence that Russia was planning to engineer a pretext to blame Ukraine for an attack. The details of the intelligence, the officials said, are credible and extremely concerning. Russian disinformation in recent weeks has falsely accused NATO of planning an invasion or in, uh, intervention into Ukraine. And there's draft law under consideration in Russia that would recognize uh, what Moscow calls the Donetsk and sure. Luhansk People's Republics. Russia always needs to buy a vowel. They yeah. do. Yeah. Um, there's vowels, but they, there's, they're missing between some letters. <laughs> yeah. uh, Russia considered recognizing governments in the separatist-controlled region in 2014, but they ultimately did back down. The proposal has been revived by members of the Communist Party, which is the second largest faction in the Duma, in Russian Duma in recent days. The, par- the Russian parliamentarians pushing the law have argued that Ukraine is planning an offensive to reassert control of the area. If that happens, the lawmakers argue, Russian-speaking residents will be denied basic rights. Ukrainian oppression of Russian speakers in eastern Ukraine is a common theme of Russian state media and websites controlled by Russian intelligence services, but the reality is that the language is not the hard dividing line in Ukraine that Moscow suggests. And Chris was very upset with the DOD. Well, I mean... Or at least their spokesperson. Well, yeah, their spokesperson, I think he was kind of an idiot yesterday. Um, he got defensive when a reporter from the Associated Press asked, you know, what kind of proof do you have Mm -hmm. that there was a Russian disinformation campaign? Mm -hmm. And the... It was a contentious discussion because we listened to this morning. And, and, you know, the the DOD spokesman said, you know, trust us. That was his eventual thing. I mean, they were, they had a... There was a better, there was a back and forth. Yeah. It was a five minute back and forth. It was contentious. It was contentious. And um, the DOD spokesman kind of accused the, uh, the AP reporter... Uh, of siding with Russia just for doing his job of asking for a little, you know, a little more proof. Um, you know, the Pentagon has said trust us before, right? And we fell for it, and it turns out that they were wrong, mm-hmm. that they were lying to us. Mm-hmm. There's a fog of war in in, in on both sides mm-hmm. when there's a cold war going on. There's a Russian disinformation campaign, and of course, there's going to be an American di- disinformation campaign. That is a part of war, and so the. The reporter was doing his job by asking just for a little shred of evidence mm-hmm. that what they were saying was correct. I'm sorry, I don't buy. Trust us. I I totally understand where you come from, and I think that this is actually like a bigger problem. That's what's there was a, a report on. Um, I'm gonna, for a second. Mm-hmm. Um, part of the reason they're saying that our response has been so problematic here in the U.S. is because there's been there's a lack of trust in the government. This, mm-hmm. this goes back to Watergate. And, mm-hmm. We, mm-hmm. and we've seen this, and you know, we saw this with WMDs sure. in Iraq. We saw this um, I mean, it, it, countless times that we've seen this happen. I mean, uh, uh, my example this morning was, you know, Pat Tillman. The, when, Pat, when Pat Tillman was killed, mm-hmm. the, the Pentagon initially said he was killed by enemy fire. Turns out they knew he was killed by friendly fire, but they didn't tell us because they thought it would hurt morale. us. Yeah, morale or something. Yeah. Um, when when all it did was hurt trust in the Pentagon, right? And it's and the, the pro, it's problematic that we we live in a society where we we have to question everything and we can't trust, and that's and that it, it it's causing problems in other parts of our lives as mm-hmm. well. Yeah, uh, you know, like I said, with pandemic response, mm-hmm. for example, that, well, that to me is the biggest one right now. But this fits a pattern that, and again, that's problematic as well. This fits a pattern with Russia disinformation. I mean, we saw them do this against Biden. Mm-hmm. They tried to do this with the, with the Hunter Biden laptop. Right. Mm-hmm. We've seen this so many times that this this seems to be Russia's go-to thing because it's a cheap way for them to give themselves some standing or some ground or to to help something without actually having to, you know, go in basically invade a country unprovoked. This gives right. them a, a right. reason. Right, but just because it seems like something they would do I understand doesn't mean completely. that they were doing it. Well, I, you know? and well the part of the the backing up of of the reporting Mm -hmm. uh recent russian disinformation focused on false accusations of genocide and the recent political actions being taken in the parliament that Mm -hmm. i just spoke about lent credence to the intelligence plus we have british intelligence supporting actually they were the ones that let us know right so there is that i'm i'm with the ap report i just like a a little 
just tiny bit of evidence that this is what was going on. I know that the Pen that the Pentagon briefed um, uh, members, members of, Congress of Congress about this. I would like one member who of Congress who was in that meeting to say, "Yeah, what they were saying was true." And and part of the reason that they, they don't want to release everything at this moment uh -huh. is because some of I it has that. been declassified. I get that. I sources. totally get that. I would I would like methods, a right. member of Congress who was in that meeting to say, "Yep, what they said was true." Right. But that hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened yet. This was literally reported and if a, yesterday. And if a member of Congress comes out today and says, yes, then I'll, I'll be fine. I'll be fine with that. But for the Pentagon to say, trust us, and to accuse a reporter of siding with Russia because he was asking a question, asking for just a little more proof, I that, that, that sits very wrong well, with me. It's also problematic right now because we do have reporters like Tucker or news person or media personalities like Tucker Carlson who are out there actually parroting Rus Russian talking points. Yes. We have members of Congress who are also saying these same talking points. You know, we, we had, um, we played the audio of Mass and Cawthorn yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it, so there, there is that, there is a strain of that already in, in the dialogue. And so I can understand why the reporter may have gotten a little, I mean, not the reporter, I'm sorry, uh, Ned Price, who was the spokesperson mm -hmm. yesterday who was talking, um, got defensive about it because we are seeing this, this pushback based on absolutely nothing coming from uh, some some media outlets like Fox News or you well, know this was an AP reporter and Ned knew who the reporter was right no I, I understand you know, that uh, the AP is you know they're straight down the middle yeah they True. don't they don't have an agenda now you you did pull some uh, Senator Coons audio was this after this reporting uh, this is a, this is, no this this is after the reporting and this was um, after the briefing he did not mention anything about the uh, the the intelligence that they saw in the in was he asked about it he said that we cannot talk about what we saw in the classified briefing so there's your answer so somebody did speak to it and he said i can't talk about it which is problematic i understand for you for, for that, that that's problematic for chris and i understand that i i, I do too yeah it is for me too and it's but I, I, there are certain times where i just i have to have faith that people are are good actors and Chris Coons, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna trust him when he says this. Yeah, I mean he's not known for, yeah, you know, he's um, a level-headed. He is, um, and so perhaps somebody will be asked because this is literally 24 hours ago. Yeah, um, that this came out. So, um, I would imagine that uh, Jen Psaki will be asked some I'm, questions today <laughs> uh, about sure such things. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I would I would point out that, um, who was that that you were that was. It, um, th this is not from the same report that was talking with Ned Price, but in the, the AP story on this, mm -hmm. it says in a break from past, U.S. Uh, and its allies are increasingly revealing their intelligence findings right. as they confront Ru Russian preparation okay. for a possible invasion of Ukraine. So, And we do know that there are 100,000 Russian troops if, on the border. Yes, <laughs> there's that too. If if the Pentagon had said yesterday, you know, more information will be forthcoming, that would, I uh, would have been happy with that. Right. Yeah. But he didn't. He, he did. said, you're siding with Russia. Probably not the best thing that no. you can say. No, that was not bad. That was bad not communication. Yeah. I agree with you on that. And on that really uplifting <laughs> note. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's 19 minutes after. We're not fighting. We're no, just, we're not we're fighting. Just discussing. We're not fighting. Yeah. 